Hi everyone, this is Greg from Greg's Wifi Guide in Paris, France. Uh, bonjour. <laughs> this is an English video, but uh, if you have a question, you can ask me about uh, it in French on the comment section, and I might pop in a few French words here and there. Right, um, I have a lot of videos to do and I had planned a lot of things, but uh, while preparing this and been a bit uh, short on time to have a big, big insight like I do usually, I don't have the time, I'm sorry. But uh, I decided to do something different because uh, like I uh, might have said here and there from now and then, you uh, are, f I am, <laughs> everyone maybe, uh, I am forgetting to review whiskies that I enjoy a lot and uh, simply because it's so evident that I think I've done it and even if it's, uh, you can find things already on my website about this whiskey and this series, um, there is a good chance I will, if I don't review it now, <laughs> I will forget it. Uh, so I said, let's place this in between things that are planned uh, just to uh, provide you also some content and also some uh, purchase or gift opportunities. And once again, I'm not paid by the brand, by any brand um, to say what I say. Uh, but today it is a whiskey review about a blended malt. What is a blended malt? For those who don't know, it is a whiskey, uh, and here we are in Scotland today, a whiskey that gathers uh, single malts produced by one distillery, uh, but they this gathers several distilleries single malts, so each distillery makes a single malt. And here, this is an in independent bottling, and the independent bottling chooses to select several distilleries with their single malts for their characteristics to make a blended malt so something which requires knowledge and experience and um, also uh, choices to blend together whiskies and here what is interesting it's a uh, this, this series called Remarkable Regional Malts by its producer, uh, Douglas Lang. Uh, this series uh, decided to explore whiskies according to officially named regions of uh, Scotch whiskey production. So, as you know, there's Speyside, so, uh, and I apologize, I don't have all the, the, the series uh, examples from all the series. Some are gone, some are not purchased yet. So, usually for the Speyside area, you have the Scaliwag expression from Douglas Lane. From the Highlands, you have the Timorous Beastie. And from, uh, for the uh, Campbelltown region, region you have the Goldrens, but they have decided to switch things a bit uh, with the regulations so for instance they did create this which previously was called Rock Oyster and now is called Rock Island which gathers whiskies from uh, all the islands including J uh, Isla which is a bit uh, different because they also do an Isla whiskey uh, so the Rock Island gathers whiskies from these, from these islands, and this one also. So we have uh, Orkney here. Uh, we have Sky here, so not this. Sorry, we have Mal, uh, we have Jura, we have Aran, and Isla. But today we are speaking about. This, which is the Epicurean, and the Epicurean is uh, all about lowlands. So this region, just considering Great Brit uh, England is there and the Wales there. So this is, this is, sorry, man, 
I'm always losing uh, time for the stupid things when I have the information. I'm sorry. Glasgow, Edinburgh. Just to... Uh, no, I don't point well. Sorry. Edinburgh, Glasgow. So this is the region which is traditionally... Not only lowland distilleries are there, but of course uh, a bunch, if not almost all, the uh, grain distilleries of Scotland. Now, what gets complicated, and yeah, I forgot, uh, just to finish, the, one of the most famous, uh, probably this is a mini, um, of this series of remarkable regional malts that were released, I think, around 2015 or 16, but uh, uh, rather 15, I think, if I'm not mistaken. The Big Pete with this <laughs> crazy a guy which uh, gets all the wind and the sea breeze and everything <laughs> a big pit um, and this gathers single malt from Isla uh, including tiny portion of Port Ellen at least at that time less and less now and also uh, Port Ellen profile changes over the years as it gets older so the it's another question i know but the characteristics that for instance me it's my favorite distillery port island in case you don't know has changed and some distillery house style that we're coming across more evidently for instance in my home blends 25 years old uh 21 25 years old 26 years old uh port ellen now we're up to 35 37 and more this is not the same profile this is not the same influence it is more green now it is less heavily pitted it is different it was it's still a generality but so yeah this is very popular the big peat which comes at christmas we're going close to christmas uh, this is an old one but uh, uh, at cast drink uh, version as well as you can see here the distilleries that are in named um, but yeah today it's about this and why is this almost empty <laughs> because i enjoy it so i rather show you this and it like as you can see here non chill filtered uh, it doesn't say here but it says on the website uh, it's natural color as well A small batch release 46.2 so this is one that really represents well in my opinion the lowlands um, in this series uh, the Epicurean there's around seven if I'm not mistaken maybe over seven different versions I have two I will show you the second one soon uh, the second one yeah I can show you right away it's one that was made for Paris for France French market and it's a bit special about its creation not only the cask type uh, there's also uh, no age statement cast strength for uh, Edinburgh this is the Edinburgh edition uh, which is a 53.5 I'm not mistaken uh, there's also a NES Rivesalt uh, limited edition uh, Rivesalt is a sweet wine from France from south of France uh, usually very tasty so the influence has to be tame it can be complicated um, they, there is a 12 years old um, there is a, I think a German edition whiskey Jason covered with a had a cognac ex cognac casks I'm not sure he was very happy with it in my memory uh, basically there there you have all the different expressions uh, I have the producers notes here but I won't really mind uh, unless you want it this is the color and again sorry it depends also on the camera the light that's quite but you see it's quite clear for me it's a light muscade wine color and uh, almost clearer than that even a so white wine um, what else can I say Douglas Lang is one of the biggest 
in, in uh, I mean, the most important historically and in uh, the quality releases, in my opinion, of the uh, UK uh, Scottish indie butlers. Uh, and they are here since 1948. Um, Douglas Lang is the name of the founder. Uh, Fred Lang, his son, has continued his work up to, unfortunately, uh, uh, severance in, uh, in 2013 between the brothers, Stewart and, and Fred, who uh, went separate ways and did split all the ranges because a lot of ranges there the uh the douglas lang but also now hunter lang produces blended whiskies blended malt single malt single grains so uh there's a lot of ranges it's super complicated uh the old particular the old mal cask you might know uh and also there's a nice series but this one is a new one from douglas lang from fred lang only i, I like this one for instance single-minded old particular is now the one of the most famous series uh most of the time i think it's cast drink with keys single cask but can be more complicated than that uh, reduced to 50 or over or a bit under or natural cast drink and they severed so uh steward lang uh one of the two brothers went to create hunter lang and also, uh, more recently, to build a distillery in Nyla called uh, Ardneho. And for instance, and I'm sure because I don't have my website, uh, <laughs> uh, and uh, I cannot see it at the same time, I don't have two screens. But please check out, I, I will send, put a link uh, to check out the different series they have because it can be complicated old man old mouth cask for instance was a, uh, initially a douglas lang series and then it had switched to it was sold to hunter lang so old pre-2013 bottlings of old mouth cask are made by uh, are bottled by uh, douglas lang fred lang i mean and probably also his brother <laughs> while the new ones are I only bottled by uh, Stewart and, and his sons so uh, now this to come back to this uh, you will have the ranges that have been severed on my website so please check it out if you want to learn more this series has been worked and uh, created and also design wise uh, by the daughter of uh, uh, which I had the chance to meet a few times Kara uh, so Fred's Fred Lang's daughter who who is an experienced woman who worked previously in Beaumont for instance uh, so uh, and this really uh, for me showcases uh, some of the freshest approach of Lowlands whiskies unadulterated if you like sure this one is young i don't have the age statement uh there's no age statement but i don't have the uh, approximative age i won't bet of something older than eight six or eight years old for the main content but i might mistake uh this was launched around uh like i said 2015 16 i have a this is a 2016 this is more recent uh this is a 2020 haha bottling i forgot <laughs> uh and this is also this uh this is bottled at 46.2 but it doesn't disclose the distilleries that are in so for those who don't know in lowlands you had of course it for the price around 45 to 55 euros uh, so around i don't know 35 pounds maybe to 45 something like that it obviously cannot have or accept very few contents it's just an opinion and even uh, i'm not sure about it it cannot have closed distillery content i'm not i will not put a penny on that uh, so little meal saint magdalene inverleven uh, rosebank for instance or, or even more ladyburn or glenflagger forget it 
they are not going to be there. Also, the young distilleries, uh, Kingsborn, for instance, of course, they're not, uh, or uh, Lindor, of course, they're not there. Uh, they don't have uh, enough old content uh, to be in there. So what is left? Ochentoschen, Bladnoch, Glenkinchi. Um, basically, this is probably uh, a mix of those three uh, distilleries uh, content. It doesn't state it on the label anywhere and on the website, but I, I strongly believe this is an ex-bourbon casks only blended malt. Um, this one is, uh, we're gonna try it. The best is to try it. Okay, so enough said, enough said. That's what I like. This is a, uh, something celebrating like probably no other. There are others, of course. But in this kind of greenish, uh, citrusy, uh, barley-ish, uh, herbal, grassy, fresh, almondy style, this is celebrated, celebrating the barley and malted barley in particular. This is fresh. This there is a yeasty side uh, which uh, uh, betrays the youthness. There are probably four or five years old stuff in there. Uh, majority must be quite young. But what is striking and very seductive is the kind of. Uh, it's hard to describe. There's something wrapping everything in sweetness and in uh, in a charming uh, estuary profile. So you have this English, I call it English licorice all sort, bonbon anglais, English sweets, I call it in French. So you have, this is the esters shouting loud in this one. So this, uh, I would say on a bed of vanilla, and custard, you will have some beautiful citrus fruit notes, lemons, fresh lemons, lemon sherbet. You will have also uh, some, uh, what I call it in English, vine peach. Yeah, it's something I didn't know in English. Um, so what I call yellow fruits, there are some lemons, but also some quinces. Uh, also there's these pineapple um, and pear, which is typically estuary. Um, first fill bourbon barrel must be majority there, I, uh, is my guess. Uh, there's also these sweet spices, you can already feel in those. Quite an herbal and grassy style, but when I say that, usually I, uh, it comes across as something green, a bit austere. But it is not here. This has come across very fresh, rounded, and yeah, yellow. <laughs> yellow is the color I would associate with it. And also the uh, something that will be more obvious on the palate, barley sugar. Okay, let's go on the palate. Yeah. This is refined, this is complex, this is young. But for me, this is beautiful. I would add now on the palate to the citrus fruit, mainly lemon and uh, lemon sherbet, unsugared, not totally unsugared, barley sugar, sucre d'orge in French, um, herbe sèche, dried herbs, but not overpowering, so it's not, it's not kleinish. Um, some sweet spices I forgot to mention, cinnamon comes across, also a bit of ginger, but sweet. Um, this is herbal, this is, there's loads of uh, vanilla uh, wrapping uh, candied lemon for me. Hint of aniseed. D46% is 0.2 is, is spot on to deliver all this. 
and also of course the chill the non-chill filtering so everything sugar wise is natural there I'm adding a bit of water mm. this reveals a bit more the sweetness the barley sugar the aniseed on, on on the background but this is very slight this is not also the sweet spice everything is in harmony with enough power enough structure to uh to build something that will stay on your palate for a while there's enough sweetness not to make it something hardly structured and strong like a spring bank but we're not so far the, this is malted barley in its green and yellow if i may say its style um, this is super super uh, pleasant this is also great on ice sorry if i shock someone there um, i never revise my rating and might be the time now It, it is great it is balanced etc but um, it's probably the previous one is probably exager exaggerated loses one I'm going to say yeah yeah okay uh, well probably around 90 I'm going to surprise you on this batch, uh, forgot to say my batch is from 2016. So this corresponds to this bottle, in fact. Uh, sorry, I'm losing time to decipher, but yeah, um, this is 25. <sighs> Apologies because 25 November of 2016. And there you have it. So for me, beautiful whiskey, highly recommended as an aperitif. Uh, maybe a mixer, but to do a nice cocktail, for instance, rather than put it with something that was degraded like Coke and things like that. Yeah, quite nice whiskey. Now, as a bonus, I'm gonna now propose you my notes i know it's not available uh, probably in your country um, put this aside 55 euros was the uh, paris edition for the caviste as we say here in france you see the the only difference is uh, in the tube as well oh there's another one i haven't seen <laughs> noticed because there's a kind of baguette and croissant here. I forgot about that. <laughs> I just saw the, the French flag here and the Eiffel Tower. It's so funny. I, I really love what uh, Cara does. This is one of 600 bottles. Uh, this is a French edition. And a funny story. This is something that was created uh, with um, how many people? It doesn't say I thought it was five people but I'm not uh, exactly sure um, sorry I haven't checked it bef beforehand uh, and even uh, no it's there okay one two three four five six the six people there uh, which are either bartender or retailers and one of them is a, a relationship of mine. It's fun. And I have to see him. I never had time to honestly to go back to see him. There was all, always something distracting us for speaking about this. But I have to see Christophe uh, from La Cave de Tolbiac who par did participate to uh, select the cask for this. So Christophe, si tu nous entends. <laughs> this is a French wink. Um, 
so this one the difference in this one uh, I think there were some egg X French oak cask, maybe cognac, but I suspect uh, I suspect uh, some sherry casks as well. I'm not sure. Let's find out. I haven't tried this for a while. Color-wise, it's a bit darker than the other one, but honestly, it's not not that far. On the nose, the nose is firmer, is tighter. There's, you can feel some tannins from the wood, so this is uh, for me. I'm almost sure there's some, quite some European oak in there. Oh yeah, I forgot to say. I'm sorry. I'm really. Uh, it, it shows apologies that I'm uh, a bit distracted and I'm late on my schedule to, to today. Sorry, guys. The Epicurean, the name comes from a gentleman that uh, was supposed to live in the 30s and uh, in Glasgow. Uh, so the hat, all the, the thing. And he was uh, doing uh, very famous sumptuous parties in Glasgow for his friends. So this Glasgow man <laughs> is celebrated by this figure here on the, on the label and giving the name. The Epicurean was his nickname. Okay, so on the nose. And yeah, uh, Douglas Lang uh, is responsible of some of the most important bottlings of uh, close distilleries, rare distilleries, uh, fillers, like other uh, historical important, Gordon MacPhail's, uh, Gordon MacPhail, Caden Head. Uh, among the most famous and the earliest ones. Uh, I think the first one was Kiddenhead, first to bottle single casks and cask strength. Then Gordon MacPhail, so we're talking about 180 uh, years of history for uh, Kiddenhead, something like that, and 130 for Gordon MacPhail. Then all the uh, most of the others are more recent. And have less stock. Duncan Taylor has an awful lot of stock of all the whiskies from Scotland. Uh, Douglas Ling as well, uh, Gordon MacPhail as well. Probably Gordon MacPhail has uh, most certainly now the oldest casks of uh, Scotch whisky because there you see they're released in 80 years old. Uh, Glenlivet, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, so they have the ability to uh, in their warehouses to. Uh, to nurture and to monitor a very old cask of, uh, of whiskey and this is almost the same younger but uh, I saw 40 years old 48 50 years old stuff from uh, Douglas Links not often but mostly uh, they're under 30 35 but they have stock and so does of course also when they split Hunter Lang So this one is a bit tighter, it's less fresh, it's less airball, uh, there's something more on dried fruits, there's less vanilla as well. There's some gentle oak coming on, but there's still some cooked baked apple, but there's still the background is the same less appealing on the nose than the other one I have to say uh, maybe some older content okay let's go on the palette Slangeva mm. this is nice but this is different there are more spices in there something I also makes it in favor for more sherry cask and more French oak. Um, there are some slight sourness, uh, some tannins from the oak and probably also from the wine if there's some sherry cask in, I'm not sure. Um, there's almost some pastry side, that's why probably there are those baguette and croissant, <laughs> French bread specialties. And also you can see the cereals, 
I don't know if it's gonna focus well. That's not easy. Okay, forget about that. <laughs> anyway, uh, I haven't checked about its availability. Yeah, so it's one, uh, two. If you want to know, it's uh, Vinomancy. Adrien from Vinomancy, Arthur, uh, not going to give the names with too long. Arthur from a Cocktail Club, Nicolas Loiseau from La Cave du Gourmet, uh, Davide Picone Casa from Moonshiners, okay, Guillaume Bruno from Vin d'Epices, so Christophe Vidal from La Cave Tolbiac, and Adrien Dev from Vinomancy. Those are the creators of this version. Of course, under the supervision of uh, probably Cara Lang. Okay, so this one is a bit more difficult. I'm gonna lower the points there, uh, hoping it will be better with the water, because it doesn't come across as fresh, I have to say, as the other one. So it loses something, it gains something in terms of complexity, pastry style, etc. Not so much, but it loses points on the, the freshness, the the youthfulness of the barley and the barley sugars that are less present. But I enjoy it as it is a bit different take. Mm. Mm -hmm. Nice. Now a few drops of water reveal more some pleasant pastry side. Some caramelly natural caramel, praline, a bit. Um, we're not there, uh, we're not in Nicker Coffee Malt, it's different, for instance. Uh, like I saw this with uh, Roy, uh, he was describing some caramel and uh, uh, about Nicker Coffee Malt, and for me it was right on uh, the praline, which is a French word and French uh, dessert, uh, not dessert, but uh, we have pralines au pluriel, on plural, which is sweet, this is different, but the base is praliné, which is a kind of nutty, uh, creamy pastry thing. Um, yeah, okay, so I have to do the count, uh, I'm sorry, but I will go under 90 for this one, probably 88, 87, something like that. Which is still a great, uh, I mean, a great uh, mark, but it is not as pleasant as the uh, the previous one. Now that said, I, I really enjoy it more with a few drops of water. Okay, I wanted this to be not too long, so. There you have it, <laughs> like some say. I hope you like this. If you like this, please don't forget to uh, give a like, thumbs up, uh, subscribe. If not, thank you for the newcomers to this channel. You are all very welcomed. Uh, share it with your friends and uh, also leave a comment. It helps for uh, the uh, referencing of the video as well as the likes. Um, Sometimes it misses. And see you soon for something different. Bye-bye. Have a nice weekend.